All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new user in Okta. So we're going to head over to directory, people, add person, first and last name, and note that the username will always be an email. So your primary email and your username will always be the same. So let's insert that email address here. Uh, we're not adding a secondary email. We're not adding any groups right now. And the activation status should be set to activate now. Why? Because we want the account to be active immediately. Now, let's say you wanted to activate the account later, right? All you would do is select activate later and save it. And then what will happen is the account status will be set to staged and you'll have an activate button beneath that and you can simply select that button and then an email will be sent to the user at this email or whatever the email is for the user. And then they'll have explicit instructions on how to activate their new account. So that's how the activate later function works on Okta. But for now, we're going to make sure our status is activate now because we want it to be activated right this second. So. Let's move forward and set up the password. And we're going to uncheck this box always. User must change password on first login. We don't want that right now. So we're going to press save. Now, it says the person was added, right? And the account is active. But we don't see that account that we just created. So what we need to do is simply refresh our screen. Now, remember, every time you create a user or a group, that new object doesn't appear within your list. You have to refresh your screen for that new object to appear within your list. So always remember to refresh your screen after you create a new user or a, a group. So that being said, Kevin is there. Uh, let's confirm if Kevin's account works. So let's see if we can log into it. So we're gonna log out of our admin portal and we're gonna just put in Kevin's email address and password. And voila, his account works, he's able to log in. So now that we have confirmation that the account works, we're gonna log out and we're going to go and add some attributes to Kevin's profile. Um, Kevin is going to be a CEO and he's going to be joining the executive department. So we're gonna add those attributes to his user profile. So I'll show you how to do that now. So we're gonna log out. We're gonna log back into our admin portal. Go to admin. We're gonna go to directory, back to people. And then we're gonna select Kevin's profile and we're gonna to go to the profile tab. And as you can see here, we have different user attributes here, right? But what we want to do is add a title and a department. So what we need to do is select edit, put his title there, a CEO. And the department is going to be executive because executives are usually CEOs. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna copy this name because I'm gonna create an executive group next. But first, let's save this. So we're gonna create an executive group. We're gonna go to groups under directory and then select add group, give it a name and then we'll say executive group as the description. Save it. So again, we don't see the executive group within our list, so we need to refresh the screen, and there we have it. It's listed right here. Now, we look a little bit closer. There are no users within the executive group. So what we want to do is we want to automate the, the group provisioning process, meaning we want Kevin to be added to the executive group without us manually adding him to that group. So that means we need to create a group rule. 
So we're going to go to rules and select add rule. So we're going to call this rule executive. We're going to set up the logic to automate that process. So what this says is if the user attribute, which is the attribute from the profile, the one we specifically worked on was the department. So we need to look for the department string within this list. So the department string, we need to select that equals executive, then assign them to the executive group. What this says overall is if the user has the executive department in their profile, assign them to this group. So what that does is that allows us to provision groups a lot quicker, minimizing error. So that being said, what we're going to do is we're not going to make any exceptions for the users, but we're going to just verify that Kevin will have this department within his profile. So we're going to put Kevin's name here, search his name and preview it. And as you can see, it says user matches rule. So now we can select save. But before we do anything, the status is inactive. You want to always, always make sure that the status is active. Reason being is if it's inactive, it's not going to work. You're going to be wondering what's going on. Why aren't my users being added to this group automatically? That's because your rule is inactive. So status is active. So now let's go back to all groups. The executive group now has one person in it. So let's verify if Kevin is in it. Kevin is in it and is managed by the executive rule. So that is how you automate your group provision and process. So now we're going to add a custom attribute to Kevin's profile. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I go right here to the profile, actually no. Let me go to profile editor. So I'm in people. I'm gonna go to Kevin's profile and go to the profile tab. And as you can see, here are the list of user attributes for the user, right? This is just information about the user. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add a custom attribute about the user. And it could be anything. So let's think about it. Um, we're going to say favorite cartoon, okay? So in order for us to add a custom attribute, we need to go to profile editor and we need to select user default. And we're selecting user default because we are editing the default profile for users. And in order for this to reflect on all users in Okta and our, on our IDP side, we need to edit the user default under profile editor. So we're gonna select that, select add attribute. The data type will remain string. Display name will be favorite cartoon. All right, we'll copy that. Now here's where it gets a little a little tricky. It's not hard, but a little tricky. You just gotta pay attention to this. So the variable name is this, right? It's favorite cartoon, but we have to close in the gap. So we need to close in the gap between the two words. And then for the first letter of the first word, it needs to be lowercase always, right? And then this, for the second word, the first letter is always capitalized. So this is the format you must use an octa for the variable name, okay? So we're not gonna set any descriptions, we're not gonna enumerate it, we're not going to uh, add any attribute lengths. The attribute is not required, but what we're gonna do is we're going to make this a read-write permission so that we can add information about the user on their profile. So we need to select read-write, press save, and now that new attribute is added. Now, every time we create a new attribute, it always populates towards the end of the list. So as you can see here, favorite cartoon is at the bottom of the list, okay? So it says custom because this is something we created. This is a custom attribute, okay? So now that that's done, we're gonna go back to Kevin's profile under people, profile, and then we're going to check to see if that attribute appears. So we scroll to the bottom of his, his profile, we see favorite cartoon, which lets me know that the attribute was successfully created. So let's go ahead and edit and add his favorite cartoon. And his is Ed, Ed, and Eddie.
So we're going to save that. And that is the first video on user provisioning, starting with creating a new user, adding attributes to the user, creating a new group, creating a group rule, automating the group provisioning process with logic, and we've added a custom attribute to the user profile. So I hope you've gained some value from this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a comment or send me a message. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. And as always, be blessed.